This is a blanket design that I am naming Willow. It's got my all time favourite built in garter stitch edging alongside a beautiful textured panel in the middle that is made up predominantly of stockinette stitch with these little dashes of texture just to give a little bit more interest to the project as a whole. This project is designed for those of you who are either experienced and want an easy knit or for those of you who may not be so experienced but are wanting to up your skill set. So if you can work a knit stitch and a purl stitch confidently then this project will be fine for you. To knit a blanket the same size as mine which is 60 centimetres wide by about 80 centimetres long you're going to need 400 grams of double knit yarn. For those of you not in the UK that is three weight or light worsted weight and the yarn I used for this particular blanket was King Cold Cherish DK in the shade Kingfisher. You're also going to need some circular knitting needles. Now you can use any length that you feel comfortable with, but I wouldn't suggest that you use anything shorter than 80 centimeters. And then if you're using double knit yarn like I am, then they're going to need to be four millimeters in diameter. If you choose to knit in a different yarn, then just make sure that the size of your needles is the correct size for the yarn that you're using. You're also going to need some embroidery scissors and a tapestry needle to sort out your ends. And then last but not least, you are going to want two stitches markers so that you can mark out your side borders which just makes knitting the pattern repeat so much easier. On a blanket like this with a built-in border I still like to give you the pattern multiple for the middle textured pattern separately to the stitches that you cast on for the border. That just gives you the freedom to change the size and depth of the border if you want or even the type of stitches that you use for the border and still have the pattern multiple handy for that middle textured panel. The pattern multiple for that middle panel on this blanket is six plus one. That means you want to cast on a multiple of six stitches. So six, 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 six. And then when you are done with that, you add on one extra stitch. After you've done that, you can then add your 18 additional stitches for your side borders. So that gives you nine stitches on either edge of your blanket for your border. I'm just going to cast on a very small sample today, but if you want to make the same size blanket that I have in the introduction, you will need to cast on a total of 133 stitches. I like to use the long tail cast on method for all my blankets, but if you have a method that you prefer to use, then please go ahead and use it. It will still work. This blanket is worked from the bottom upwards so the first part that we need to knit is that bottom garter stitch border and to do that we are going to knit a total of 15 rows in exactly the same way. You are just going to work across and knit every stitch with the exception of the final stitch. So knit your way across your row until you get to that final stitch. The final stitch of every row in this blanket is a selvage stitch and we don't knit this stitch, we work a slightly different technique and that will give you a really beautifully neat long side edge up your blanket. So the technique we're going to use for this final stitch is a slip one purl wise with the yarn in front. The first step you want to do is to pop your yarn to the front of the work. I do that by just lifting it onto this right hand needle because as long as this stitch goes behind this yarn then it will be the yarn in front of the work. If you're an English knitter you just want to lift the yarn to the front of your work before you slip this stitch. Next you want to pop your right hand needle into this stitch from right through to left so as if to purl. You are not going to pop it in from left to right you're just going to slide it in from right to left. Then you want to make sure that the stitch is firmly on this right hand needle and then you can remove your left hand needle because you have slipped it over from your left hand needle to your right hand needle and then the last thing that you want to make sure that you do is that you pull this yarn to the front of your work so that it's not accidentally looped over your needle and creating a new stitch. So that was the first of our 15 rows and what you will now need to go away and do is knit another 14 rows in exactly the same way, knitting every stitch with the exception of the final stitch and that final stitch you want to slip purl wise with the yarn in front. After those first 15 rows, we are ready to jump into the main pattern repeat that forms the bulk of our blanket. The 12 rows that I'm going to show you next form the building blocks of your blanket and they are what you will repeat over and over until you have worked enough repeats for the size of blanket that you want. 
The first time we work row one, we're going to do a little bit of setup work to pop our two stitch markers in place to mark our side borders. But every subsequent time you work row one, you're just going to slip those markers instead of placing them. Our odd numbered rows are right side rows. So that means that you have the right side of your work facing you when you knit them. Row one starts by knitting the first nine stitches. Then you're going to grab the first of your two stitch markers and pop it onto your right hand needle. Then you want to knit all the way across until you have nine stitches left to work on your left hand needle. So that's nine stitches before the end of the row. When you get to that point, just like we did at the other end of the row, you're going to grab your second stitch marker and pop it onto your right hand needle and then carry on and knit eight stitches so that you only have one stitch left to work on this left hand needle. This final stitch of the row, just like with our garter stitch border, we are going to slip purl wise with our yarn in front. So pop your working yarn to the front of your work, however you feel comfortable, and then slip your right needle into that stitch from right to left, not from left to right. Slip it firmly onto that right hand needle and then remove your left hand needle once it's safely on that needle and then lift your working yarn to the front of your work so that you don't accidentally create a new stitch. Row two, knit the first nine stitches. Slip that marker over and then you are going to purl all the way across until you hit your second marker. Once you reach it, slip that second marker over and knit eight stitches. And to finish the row, you're going to slip that final stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row three is really nice and easy. It's the same as row one. So you just want to knit all the way across, slip your markers as you come across them. And then for that final stitch of the row, you are going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front, like you have been doing for every row so far in your project. Row four, knit until you hit that first marker. Slip the marker over and then purl across until you hit your second marker. Slip your second marker over and then carry on and knit eight stitches. Finish the row by slipping that final stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row five, as with all the odd numbered rows in this project, is a right side row and it's a nice and easy row. You are just going to knit all the way across, slip your markers as you hit them, and then don't forget to slip that final stitch purl wise with the yarn in front instead of knitting it. Row six is the first of our texture rows and you want to start by knitting the nine stitches that take you to your first marker. Slip the marker over and then purl the next two stitches. Then you're going to knit the next three stitches. And now we can jump into our six stitch repeat that you're going to work across your row until two stitches before the next marker. So you are going to purl three. and knit three. And you want to repeat those six stitches until two stitches before your second marker. And if you have counted correctly, that should come after a knit three. These final two stitches before your second marker, you want to purl. Slip your marker over and knit the next eight stitches. And then finish your row by slipping that stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. For row seven, you are just going to knit every single stitch all the way across until your final stitch. 
you want to slip your stitch markers as you come across them and then to finish the row you want to slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front instead of knitting it and that keeps your really lovely selvage edge up your long edges. Row 8 you want to knit until you hit your first marker. Slip that marker over and then purl across until you hit your second marker. Slip your second marker over and then knit 8 stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. For row 9 you are going to knit all the way across. Don't forget to slip your markers over as you hit them and then finish the row with your selvage stitch by slipping the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 10, knit until you hit that first marker. That should be a total of 9 stitches. Slip the marker over and then you want to purl all the way across until you hit your second marker. Slip that second marker over and then knit 8 stitches. To finish the row you are going to slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 11 is the penultimate row of our repeat and you are going to just knit every single stitch until you hit that final stitch. Slip your markers over as you come to them and then the final stitch of the row you're going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 12 is the final row of our repeat and this is also a row that adds texture to the front of our work. You still want to start by knitting those 9 stitches before your stitch marker. Slip your marker over and then purl 5. After that purl 5 we are going to jump into our 6 stitch repeat and you are going to repeat this block of 6 stitches until 2 stitches before your second marker. You are going to knit 3 and then purl 3. And you repeat that pattern of knit 3, purl 3 until you have two stitches left before your stitch marker. And if you have counted your stitches correctly, that should come after a purl 3. These final two stitches before your stitch marker, you also want to purl. So you will have just purled 3 and then you want to purl 2 more. Then you're going to slip your marker over and knit the next 8 stitches. Slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. So these 12 rows form the building blocks of our blanket and you will now go away and repeat those 12 rows until your project is about 8 centimetres shorter than you want the final length to be. In my case, for my 80 centimetre long blanket, I worked rows 1 to 12 a total of 18 times. That's including this first set here. Then before you move on to your top garter stitch border so that you have a really lovely symmetrical project you want to repeat rows 1 to 11 once more so it's almost the same repeat but we're leaving off row 12. At that point you can join me and I will show you how we work the top garter stitch border and also cast off our project. So I'm now at the point where I finished my final row 11 so I'm ready to move on to the top garter stitch border and just like with our bottom garter stitch border it is 15 rows worked in exactly the same way. You should be starting your border with your wrong side facing you so the first row of your border is a wrong side row and you want to work 15 rows in exactly the same way. So your top border is worked in the same way as the bottom border. You're going to knit your way across until you have just one stitch left to work. When you work this first row of the border, you can remove your stitch markers because we don't need to mark our side borders anymore now that we're working the top border. And then the only stitch that is different in every row is that final stitch. And the final stitch of the row, you are going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. 
I'll just give you a refresher of this final stitch in case you need it. You are going to pop your working yarn to the front of your work and then you're going to pop this right hand needle here into the stitch from right through to left so as if to purl not from left to right and you just want to slide it onto your right hand needle and then when it's firmly on your right hand needle you can remove your left hand needle and the last step is to lift and make sure that that working yarn is to the front of your work. The rest of the border is just 14 more rows worked in exactly the same way as this row and then the final step is going to be to cast off. When you come to cast off you should have the right side of your work facing you so our 16th and very final row is a right side row and you should have eight garter ridges that consist of your 15 rows that make up your top edge. The very last row of any knitting project is your cast off and for my baby blankets I like to use a very basic knitted cast off. I do have a separate video that goes through things in really slow beginner friendly steps so if you are new to this cast off that might be something that you want to take a look at but I will just go over it very briefly in this video to give you a general idea of what to do. So you want to start by knitting two stitches. And then you are going to pop your left hand needle into the first stitch that you knitted, lift it up and over the second stitch you knitted and then all the way off your needle. So you go from two loops on this right hand needle to just one loop. Then you are going to knit one more stitch and repeat that process again. So you're going to lift the first stitch on the needle over the second stitch on the needle and go from two down to one. And you're going to work your way down your row repeating that process so knitting one and lifting one all the way until the end of the row when you should have no stitches left on this left hand needle and one stitch left on this right hand needle. When you reach the point that you have just this one stitch left on your right hand needle you can break your yarn at this point and you want to leave a nice long tail so that you have enough yarn to sew it in when you're done. To secure the final stitch I pull up on this last stitch to make it slightly bigger and at that point you can get rid of your knitting needles because we don't need those anymore. Then I put my finger and thumb through that loop, grab the tail, pull it all the way through and then just pull it nice and tight and that just secures that final stitch ready for sewing in. And once your end is sewn in that is nice and hidden and you still have a nice straight edge. A couple of final tips and tricks before I go. I often get asked if this sort of blanket can be knitted in any yarn you want. The answer is absolutely yes. Just make sure that you adjust your cast on to accommodate any extra or less stitches depending on if you're using thinner or thicker yarn. And then make sure that you choose the right size needles for the yarn that you choose to use. I also get asked if a pattern is reversible and in this instance the answer is no. If I turn the blanket over you can see that on the back it doesn't look like the front it looks pretty much like garter stitch but I am not precious about having a reversible blanket I would much rather play with texture and just have one side that looks right because trying to make something reversible can often be quite restrictive. For those of you that like to have a written pattern to follow along to I have a free version on my blog that I'll link below and then I also have an ad free pdf that you can buy if you prefer to have something to print out and take away rather than having it on a screen in front of you while you're knitting. That's all from me for today. I'll leave you with another blanket that I think you might like and I'll see you again for another video soon.